Hi YouTube, it's Dan. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this boring dry guitar signal into this neat echoey guitar signal. So as I mentioned in the previous video, I'm going to be switching to using Python to show these examples instead of Octave. I've been using Python more these days, and I'm thinking that more people probably already know how to use Python than Octave or MATLAB, and I'm hoping it's a little bit more accessible for people to um, get into this and kind of transfer these ideas elsewhere. On my computer, I have the Anaconda distribution version of Python. It's nice because it has a lot of the libraries that we already need, like NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, as well as other libraries. They describe it as being for data scientists, which is sort of a more trendy thing these days than signal processing, but we can use it just as well for DSP. Inside of Anaconda, it comes with this spider development environment, scientific Python development environment. I like using it because it's very similar to a MATLAB kind of workflow. It gives you a text editor as usual, but also a console for interacting with the code and sort of a graphical explorer of different variables that you can have. Also, it integrates well with uh, matplotlib, which is a common plotting library to use with Python. So here's Spider running on my computer. I have a script that I wrote up just to do some basic delay examples. If you're not familiar with Python and you've been following along with this series so far, I'm sure you'll have no trouble keeping up with this. If you already know Python, a lot of this will probably be pretty basic. But at the beginning, I have imports from three different libraries that are very common for this kind of work. Matplotlib helps you create different plots and graphs. Uh, NumPy uh, lets you do a lot of numerical operations, linear algebra or matrices, which are built into Octave and MATLAB, but NumPy gets you a lot of the same features in Python. I also have an import from SciPy, scientific Python, um, to interact with wave files. I have two global constants that are going to be floating point values that uh, show the echo duration in seconds. I have it set to 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds, as well as the amplitude of the delay. I have it set to 0.5. The first thing we're going to do is read in a wave file. I've named it guitar.wave. The first value that's returned is the sampling rate, fs. The next value is the signal as a signed 16-bit integer. Now if we run all of this, select it, click run selection, we will see these variables pop into our variable explorer. We can open the guitar signal and we see that just as expected it has type int 16, meaning all of the values are integers as you can see in this array. This is a common representation but it's a lot easier in DSP if we scale things to be between 0 and 1. So if we run this line right here we can convert this signed int 16 signal to a floating point signal so we'll have decimal values and then divide it by 2 to the power 15, which is the largest absolute value that we can get from a 16-bit integer. We can see that we now have a float 64, 64-bit float or double precision array with the same size as the previous array, but now scaled so that the minimum possible value is negative 1 and the maximum possible value is positive 1. This will be a little bit easier for us to deal with in a lot of DSP contexts. So the next thing we want to do is add some echo to the signal. We'll start out by doing this a really basic way. The first thing we'll want to do is take our echo duration in seconds, 0.1 seconds, and convert it into samples. We can do that by multiplying by the sampling rate. Since our echo duration is in terms of seconds, and our sampling rate is in units of samples per second, giving us the result in samples. If we use the function np.zeros with the sample length, it will get us an array with that length in samples. So if we run that, we can see that we now have an array leading zero padding signal, which is consisting only of zeros. Now what we want to do is delay our signal by adding the zero padding to the beginning of it. So if we run this line, delayed signal, gets the value of np.concatenate, which is basically just uh, putting these zero samples at the beginning of the signal and then putting this guitar signal at the end of it will get us a delayed version of this signal. Now if we look at our variables at this point, we can see that we now have a delayed signal and the size of this in samples is the same length as our guitar signal plus 
the length of the zero padding that we added to it. So that checks out. That's what we expect it to have happen. And if we open this array, we can see there's a bunch of zeros in the beginning. And then after sample 4,410, we have a bunch of audio signals and floating point. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Sorry about that. I just realized that what I had here was a lot more complicated than it needed to be. But basically, we have the same zero padding length that we want to add to the beginning for the delayed signal, and we want to add to the end to the guitar signal for the basic undelayed signal. The reason why we want to do this is we want to make sure these arrays are the same length before we add them together. If we check our variable explorer, we can see the delayed signal is this length, the guitar signal is the same length, so we can add them together. For example, if we went back to the previous length of the guitar signal without it being zero padded, and we tried to add that to the delayed signal, it will say they're not the same shape and it will be very sad. So instead, let's run this again, fix the length of our signal, we can find that we can then add them. We can see that we get an array back. We don't want to add them exactly though, we have an amplitude in mind. So if we run this line, this will create a signal that is our original signal plus some scale of the delayed version. And we can write this out to a file. Let's give it a listen. And great, that's exactly what we wanted. Just to make it extra clear what we did, let's make a quick plot of this. Now in Spider, you can use the pound percent percent to create a section, which makes it easy to run a section of your code. Uh, let's make a new plot by saying plot.figure. And then we're going to first plot the guitar signal. And then let's plot the delayed signal. And run this. We get this plot. So the blue signal shows us the original guitar signal. The orange shows us the delayed version, which is delayed by delayed by 100 milliseconds, or 4,410 samples. To get more of a true picture of what we did in this example, we can multiply by the delay amplitude. Run that again. And you can see now that we have the original guitar signal in blue and the echoed version scaled down by half the amplitude. This is a simple version of what's known in DSP as a finite impulse response. Now what that means is we have basically a filter that given some input after a finite, not an infinite amount of time, the decay from it will eventually be nothing. Now the length of this is 100 milliseconds for our purposes. So if we put in any signal after 100 milliseconds, there will definitely not be any more echoes as a result. This is different from infinite impulse response filters, which don't have as well-defined of an end decay, they will tend to delay forever, in theory at least, but in practice they'll tend to decay to a very small value. Finite impulse response filters can be represented really easily using convolution. So let's do an example of our echo using convolution. Let's switch over to another file that I've prepared and restart our console to make sure that none of our variables interact from the previous script. First, let's rerun this section, get our guitar signal and floating point loaded in. Then let's check out this section. We have the same delay length and samples from before. And now I'm creating an array called impulse response. It's going to be initially all zeros at the length of our delay length and samples. We're going to assign the value one to the first sample in the impulse response. And then at the last value in the impulse response, we're going to assign the delay amplitude. This is a cute way in Python that we can assign to the very end of an array, just index it at minus one. This would be the same thing as putting the delay length in samples minus one. One thing that's important to understand when coming from Octave or MATLAB into Python is that the first index of arrays or lists in Python is zero, whereas in Octave it's one, and then the last value is the length of the array minus one. 
And this is more common in different programming languages, whereas starting with the value 1 is more common in mathematical notation. Otherwise, everything's basically the same in terms of array indexing. If we just run this selection and plot our impulse response, you can see that we have a very boring looking signal where the very first sample is at the value 1, everything in the middle is zeros, the last value is a value 0.5. If we apply this to our input signal with convolution, we will get the same output as before in the previous script. What this convolution operation is doing at a high level is multiplying one sample in our input by the value 1, and then 100 milliseconds later, adding that same sample multiplied by the value 0.5. So let's run this section, apply the convolution, write it to an output file. If we give it a listen, we get the same result. Just for the purpose of demonstrating, if we set the initial value in the impulse response to zero and only keep the delayed version, rerun this, and as before, Plot the guitar input, plot the delayed signal, we can see that this gives us the same relationship as we had before from the basic delay example. One easy thing we could do would be to change this example to have a beat synced echo. So instead of our constant echo duration, we could use the tempo, which I happen to know is 75 beats per minute. Do one over that to get the tempo in terms of minutes per beat. Multiply by 60 to get it in terms of seconds per beat. And then multiply it by the sampling rate to get us samples per beat. So if we run this, we'll get a delay of one quarter note at 75 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and run that. Let's listen to the result. Hopefully this example has given you a quick insight into how we can create a basic delay effect just by adding some zeros into a signal or by using convolution. Convolution is super important in DSP and we can do a lot of operations using that. It turns out that you can make a lot of different filters, low pass, high pass, band pass, whatever you want, or even crazy special effects using convolution. You have to be careful with convolution in a real-time setting or when using really long filters because it can become super computationally expensive. If your goal is to create a plugin in real-time, maybe you wouldn't want to create this signal using convolution. However, when you're using a Python script offline, it's a really quick and easy way to try out some ideas. Let me know what you thought of this video. I'm trying out a lot of new stuff for this format. I'm trying to make it a little bit easier on myself to make so that I can stick to making more of them. I appreciate all the feedback from the surveys that I got. It sounded like a lot of people are interested in audio effects. So I'm hoping that this will be sort of a start in that direction and we can extend this into all kinds of different ideas since delay is such a fundamental idea in audio DSP. Let me know what other topics you're interested in me covering in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe to this channel so you can get updates on the new videos I put out. And I'll see you next time.